Thank you. How are you? You're fine. Good, good. Good that you could come here despite uh, the weather. I'm uh, going to talk about today about uh, two simple things. Life, liberty and happiness. Those are the fundamental rights in the United States Declaration of Independence. I'm a computer scientist and I design new technologies. And sometimes I wonder whether the technologies we are designing are actually helping people to live, be free and be happy. Most of the time, technologies are designed more for efficiency than for a fundamental right like happiness. So I strongly believe that the world would be better off if we technologists would design uh, te new tools that are aware of uh, human emotions. Emotions are what, and emotions are what uh, the people behind Facebook uh, were playing with. Do you know how it started? Some of you know. So it started with FaceMash. They built this web game where players had to compare two pictures of uh, female students at Harvard and deciding which one was hotter. And by comparing many pictures, then the game would return the top 10 hottest on campus, right? So from this humble beginning, the game went viral. You might imagine why. And then a company that now connects more than 1 billion people around the world was born, just with the power of emotions. Emotions is also what uh, architects and urban planners should consider when, des when designing our cities. A friend of mine, Christine, uh, recently wrote a piece uh, called uh, What Starbucks Gets That Architects Don't, or Why I Left the Architecture Profession. She wrote, publicly, not to me only, uh, they, they are architects. You are outdated. I know this because I, w I once was one of you. But now I move on. I move on because despite your love of a great curve and your experimentation with form, you don't understand people. I correct myself. You don't listen to people. So you're designing for people. You don't listen to them. Therefore, you're designing for yourself. By contrast, it might be useful to listen to people, especially if you're designing the cities and the spaces they live in. However, to design uh, a place that will make people happy, what you need to do? You need to quantify happiness, or you need to quantify beauty. And those concepts are difficult to quantify. Right? However, if I were to show you these two pictures and I would ask you which one is more beautiful, which one would you say, A or B? Who says A? Don't be shy. <laughs> Who says B? Fantastic. So a concept that is difficult to quantify, like beauty, you told me all B. That is why, um, as a computer scientist and as a scientist in general, our daily job is uh, to daydream, to eat, sleep, uh, shout at friends. Uh, you know I'm Italian. Uh, but then, so we thought, okay, thinking about face mesh, it went well for them, right? So why not doing a face mesh for cities? And that's what we did. It's called urbangems.org. Players can compare pictures uh, of urban scenes in London. And they can decide which one is more beautiful, which one is more quiet, which one makes you happier. And by comparing many pictures and having many players, we can actually rank the picture by beauty, or by quietness, or by happiness. So we can quantify how beautiful a picture is. We can associate a number, how this picture in an urban scene makes people happier. We recently analyzed the user votes gather from this platform, and we apply image processing tools that would extract, for example, colors. And surprise, surprise, 
we find out that green is the color associated with all the three emotions, beauty, quiet, and happiness. Then we apply more sophisticated processing tools and we extract visual objects. So objects from the images that tend to occur in beautiful places. And what we find out in London? Victorian and red brick houses and public gardens make Londoners happy, whereas cars make Londoners less happy. This is well known in architecture. From a pattern language, a famous book, cars give people wonderful freedom and increase their opportunities, but they also destroy the environment to an extent so drastic that they kill all social life. However, from this uh, exercise we are doing, we can actually, in a quantitative way, look at outliers, right? Things that are not the norm. Cars are always bad. They are pretty good if they are parked on back streets and uh, they are not on the way of pedestrians, for example. So you need to design parking lots in the right places. Isolated buildings, tower buildings, other two negative elements associated with sadness in, uh, among Londoners. Isolated buildings are symptom of a disconnected sick society. There is evidence to show that high buildings make people crazy. So that is again from a pattern language, is really well known in architecture, and yet from this exercise we can look at outliers. Tall buildings aren't always bad. Two exceptions, glass offices, they give London its unique identity, and landmarks. So the bottom line here is that if you design with elements that hinder, stop human relations, then like cars, isolating and tall buildings, then those are negative elements. Therefore, architects need to start designing with elements that actually contribute to human relationship. So they need to build a sharing cities where people could meet and could actually exchange whatever they want, whether those are ideas or uh, physical objects. So we gave these uh, visual objects that are associated with happiness to three architects. And they were quite pleased about the ability of designing with evidence, with evidence directly gathered from people who live in the city. So for the first time, they were designing not for themselves, but for the people, with the evidence directly gathered from them. And at a societal level, you can think about even to complement existing economic indicators like gross domestic product with something more local, gross community happiness, for example. Now, I'm a computer scientist. Architects should think about emotions, everyone should think about emotions, but also computer scientists like me should think about uh, emotions. Let's go back to the example of the web map I gave you before. It returns the short direction from point A to point B. I won't name the company who does that, yeah. but they do that, right? However, if you were to combine this map with the game I showed you before, the comparing of pictures, right? What would you get? You would get points with the happy scores, with beauty scores on the map. So you could connect the happy points together, right? And that's what we did. So we built new algorithms that connect happy points together in a way that they find from any point A to B in the city, the short direction that will maximize your happiness. So in London, this algorithm would find not only the shortest path, but it would find the beautiful path, the quiet path, and the happy path from the very true same point. However, if you, now you might wonder, well, you're doing this for London and you live in Barcelona now, right? So you should do something for Barcelona. Well, what we are doing is that we are, we are predicting the scores, the user votes that we got from the game, based on Flickr tags, right? So based on the tags and the motion expressed on those tags, we can predict the user votes in the map. And then based on these Flickr derive uh, 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 scores from the tags, for example, we applied them in Boston initially, we can actually have uh, Flickr derive a happy path, not only in London, but also in Boston. And we would like to take these ideas also to Berlin now and Barcelona, and I hope uh, you can help uh, us uh, with that. 
It's time uh, really for us, if you think about whatever I said to you today, to, to, to meet very important whys with why not. Why top-down star architects approaches, extremely expensive, financial crisis going on, why not also bottom-up approaches that will tap into the potential of every single of you, city resident. So why technologies that are only efficient? And why not technologies that think about, in very simple way, about human emotions? As I and you stand here today, know that uh, each one of us has a different idea on how to help people to live, be free, and be happy. Look around you. Look around you. So how much talent, how much energy you have there, how, much idea, how many ideas you might have, right? So if you feel the same way as I do, let's share our ideas on the, the power of emotions because these ideas are worth spreading. Thank you.